I want to start by just making sure everybody knows that today a lot of things went right. And this is, in fact, why we test. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I got off the phone with the vice president. I gave him a briefing on where we are. Um, he maintains uh, that he is very positive um, as the chairman of the National Space Council in our ability to once again launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. Um, so we did have, obviously, some challenges today. Uh, when, the, when the spacecraft separated from the launch vehicle, um, we did not get the orbital insertion burn that we were hoping for. It uh, appears as though the mission elapsed timing system um, had an error in it. Um, and that anomaly resulted in the vehicle believing that the time was different than it actually was. And because that timing was a little bit off, um, what ended up happening is uh, the, the, the spacecraft tried to maintain a very precise uh, control that it normally wouldn't have tried to maintain. And it burned a lot of, uh, a lot of prop in that, in that part of the, uh, the flight. And when that prop got burnt, uh, it looked like we weren't going to be able to, to, to go ahead and, and rendezvous with the International Space Station. By the time we were able to get signals up uh, to, to actually command it to do the orbital insertion burn, it was a bit too late. And the reason it was too late is because it, it appears, and remember, all of this is very early and preliminary, and we're learning things moment by moment, but it appears as though um, we were between uh, TDRS communication satellites, which meant we couldn't get uh, the command signal to, to, tell the to tell the spacecraft that it needed to do the orbital insertion burn soon enough. A couple of things that are important to note, and I want to be very clear about this. We as an agency and our partners at Boeing and ULA have committed that when there is something that is a, a challenge, we will be very clear and transparent about it, and we will share information as early as possible. And we have done that, and we will continue doing that. Um, it is important for us to build trust uh, with the American taxpayer so that we can continue to do these magnificent things. Um, but know this, a lot of things today did, in fact, go right. I would also attest that it could very well be that had we had Nicole Mann in the spacecraft, mm -hmm. um, remember what the, the challenge here, this anomaly has to do with automation. And Nicole and Mike are trained specifically to deal with the, the situation that happened today where the automation was not working according to plan. And if, if, if we would have had crew in there, number one, they would have been safe. To be very clear, our crew would have been safe. And in fact, had they been in there, we very well may be orbiting or we, we may be docking with the International Space Station tomorrow had they been in the spacecraft. So a lot of things went right today. I want to be really clear. A lot of things went right, and this is why we test. And because we are now in orbit, and in fact elevating our orbit, we're going to get a lot more data and a lot more information um, in, in the coming days. Um, so this is all this is all very positive in 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 in, in, in general. I would also say um, that uh, we 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 had you know the the Centaur upper stage with two RL10 engines demonstrated a very successful um, flight that you know something it had not done since 2004, um, which is a Centaur with two RL-10 engines. Um, so a lot of, a lot of uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that that was a first, but a lot of firsts did happen today that were very good. Um, and we're going to continue to learn from, from, what's, uh, from, from this test flight.